to Justin Keller. Keller walks in, deep stopped by Magnay. Looks penalty. like a delayed penalty. Yeah, penalty coming up, a shot and a go. Jordan West trying to thumb shot. Good solid check there. Now here's a chance in on goal and that's stopped. Uh, you know what, I, I don't know the, the major history of it. Uh, I came in, um, the team was obviously well established uh, earlier on. Uh, I think it was Rob Calvell, Jody Smeltzer, Cal Belge, um formed that team. And uh, it was a good team right from the, the get-go. Um, these guys were all kind of in their prime at that time, played in uh, with the juniors, actually played against the, the senior teams uh, back in the early days. And, um, you know, they always, uh, I remember the junior teams kind of saying, oh, you know, these guys are, um, a little past their prime, but they uh, they soon learned that um, they they forgot more more than most of those junior players had uh, had learned. Um, so they did a great job in in the marketing and uh, getting players involved, and kind of created a family. Um, you know, it originally started out, I believe, you know, with some friends and. And stuff like that, and then the, the recruiting process happened. I, I'm what we call a, a lifetime member. Uh, the, the Heat Lacrosse, uh, Jeff Pfeiffer, um, Doctor Jeffrey Pfeiffer, um, had a, had this theory. He was one of the original members, and he he played uh, college down in, in Nebraska, I believe it is. And anyways, he he uh, kind of instituted a lacrosse club, and that's how they do it in Australia and a few other places. And he said, like, you know, once you're a member, you're a life member. And so that's how it is. We have several members in this club um, over the years, guys that have devoted their their time and effort into helping out lacrosse in general and then played for the Heat. They're a member. And, uh, you know, so. Well, it would have started in 2003. I uh, would have been uh, Jody Schmelzer and uh, Scott Love. We're kind of looking at getting a a senior program kind of going to kind of get away from the intercross at that point was kind of the only thing kind of going for, for anyone over 22. So kind of uh, built from there. And uh, that was kind of the first year they kind of joined. Uh, just played a few exhibition games. And then 2004. Um, kind of a lot of returnees. That's when I actually came into uh, with he was in two thousand four, and then kind of have been uh, running things, so to speak, from kind of since I came on. But um, that was kind of the just kind of some guys were tired of the intercross, wanted to get some real, real lacrosse going, and then kind of got that senior team built a lot of it was kind of self-funded those first lean years and just to kind of get it um build it built up but but yeah the the history of the heat i mean like i said we got we got asked to to basically be involved in in a junior senior kind of scrimmage or or um exhibition i guess it was and we were scheduled in with every single junior team. We had to at least play them once or twice. And we, the first year was completely ridiculous. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it's kind of funny because then the next year we picked up Jordan Westpratt and uh, all of a sudden, next thing you know, we had all these kids out. Uh, and I still remember this to this day, there was, uh, there was a bunch of kids and then afterwards they're asking us to sign balls and these little posters they made and stuff like that and i thought to myself oh this is just weird right like being being not a pro athlete in any way uh in lacrosse i i just thought it was kind of cute and the funny part about it is um years later when when we had a junior that graduated into uh into the heat we uh we have a tradition it's a rookie drinking night and we take them out we take care of the rookies and you know we have a lot of fun and stuff like that and and what he brought was one of the posters he made that all of us on the heat signed and he's like i was one of those kids that you gave a ball to and signed and he's like this is it and i it just made me stop and realize like hey 
it's actually had a bigger impact than I really thought it would. So, I mean, that's essentially what we started off to do. Um, we started off to start something so that we would have some place to play, but also generations after of us would have some place to play. So we tried to keep it going earlier on, like you said uh, earlier, like uh, some of the struggles, the struggle was real. I mean, we didn't really know what we were doing. Uh, we didn't know how to run a team. We didn't know what was all involved. And I gotta say, my wife was amazing because there were times where, you know, we carried the team from one year to the other. And, uh, you know, without that, a few of us would chip in money at the end of the year because we, we set the fees and of course, like we forgot this or this came up and we never thought of that. So this happened. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things that, you know, we struggled early on, um, but you know, eventually we got it down to a science and now it's not that big of a deal. It's still administratively heavy, but it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, we, we've traveled everywhere. Uh, we tried to, uh, early on, you know, we got kind of tired of playing the juniors, I got to admit. Um, and I think they got tired of playing us. So what we try and do is use the junior kind of program to get us in shape and get us ready. And then we try and choose a tournament every year uh, to go to. And then we we actually hosted our own for a while too, uh, called the West Can Cup. Um, and we'd have teams from BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba attend. Um, so, I mean, those were good times. We'd travel to BC and Alberta for tournaments. Um, we'd, we'd go to ex exhibition games in Manitoba. They would come here. Um, so, I mean, we had a lot of fun with that over the years. Uh, the way it started, um, no, I don't know exactly the history behind it. My son uh, did played a couple of years prior in that uh, Prague tournament, uh, once with, um, I believe, Scotland, and then once with a team out of BC. And uh, he always uh, said that, you know, it was one of the best tournaments that he'd ever been in. And then there was a player that uh, I believe was a former Heat player that played on the Calgary Roughnecks, and I can't remember his name right now. Um, he talked about it. Um, actually, one of our uh, ex-players, uh, Jordan Westpratt, um, used to play with the Heat. Um, he was um, living in Ontario at the time, and he had gone uh, in 2014 with a team from Ontario and kind of kept in touch with him and he's kind of kind of brought it to our attention that they had this tournament it was, it was a pretty good time so <laughs> well honestly uh we were we rep we won a championship um and we were kind of celebrating having a few drinks in the bar and uh, I mentioned his name earlier Jordan Westpratt but he he called us to congratulate us um because I think somebody posted on social media so he, he FaceTimed me and he's, he was in Hong Kong. Uh, so he fa FaceTimed me and he said, you know, hey, congratulations. And so the boys were catching up and stuff. And then he says to me, he says, so where are you guys going on your tournament this year? And I said, well, actually, I don't know if we are. And he said, you know what? I have this killer tournament in Prague. He goes, I'm going to send you a link and we should go to this tournament. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah like have a look at it it's fantastic you guys will love it and so from there you know i hung up the phone and i was like who wants to go to Prague?" kind of threw it out to the guys to see who was kind of interested if it was even a possibility and the majority of guys were all gung-ho for it for just that opportunity and of course everyone's like yeah let's go it's sweet beautiful drunk talk right and Everybody was gung ho right away. So, and then just one thing after one thing led to another, and then they just made submitted, uh, um, you know, an application to apply for the tournament. We kind of put an application process in, and it's you got to be selected uh, to go. And uh, Andre, the the one of the organizers, I ended up talking with him several times, and 
and uh, you know, eventually um, we got the invite. But unfortunately, um, we got the invite super late. It was, uh, I gotta say, the tournament was in April, uh, and we got the invite in like beginning of March, mid March, um, because they had a team back out. And he's like, "Yeah, you're in." That set the wheels in motion to uh, start what was uh, an unbelievable experience. The only problem is, you know, flights and stuff out of Regina were a nightmare. Um, you know what it's like trying to get flights out of Saskatchewan, basically. So it basically tripled our cost to go and, and that turned off pretty much everybody instantly. So we kind of had to shelve it for a year and uh, talked with them, you know, all the way throughout the year. And then finally, 2015, he said, yep, that's your year, you guys are coming. So we started working on it and... Well, I was actually at Bishops. I was in uh, Sherbrooke, Quebec, attending university. Uh, this was 2015, uh, just about to graduate. But uh, when I finished my classes, um, just prior to that, I was told uh, the Regina Heat were going to Prague and I was a member of the Heat. So it was one of those one of those phone calls that I remember quite vividly that, uh, you know, that you can't say no to. Um, for those who know about the Alice Rebeski tournament, it's it's certainly um, on a bucket list of almost every lacrosse player I know. Um, so when I got that call and we were going to Prague, there was a no-brainer in my mind. Well, they were the first Saskatchewan team um, to go there. And I don't think anybody's been since. Some odd players have gone on their own, but this was the full Saskatchewan team that went. Kind of assembled a, a, a group to, to try and get it uh get it going and, and the team we took uh, I'll, I'll admit probably wasn't our most talented team um, but it was it was a team of absolute beauties that that decided you know what we're gonna do this thing um, it's you know first time that anybody has traveled you know to another continent uh, as a team from Saskatchewan um, so it was the first time overseas so we uh, we decided we were gonna go for it and uh, I was excited to get out there and uh see what we could do in another another country and across the pond if that. Uh, the majority of guys thought it was a good idea. The only thing is kind of limiting any guys where it's kind of the the cost, but we did had fundraising and things like that. But yeah, the cost was really just, really is this, just the flights. Um, it's really for the experience. You're not really, it is a, it is a good a tournament, but uh, it's not, it's very kind of, it's mainly just to go to, to visit the country and, and just to for that experience because um, the games are really short. Um, so it's kind of a little different than going and playing 60 minute games. Like it's 30 minute games, like two 15 minute periods. So they, they go quite quickly. So it, it is uh, a good chunk of change, but it's, it's really just to, to go for the experience. It was the veteran group, uh, the Regina Heats being formed uh, over 20 years ago. It was, uh, you know, Jody Schmelzer, uh, Kyle Belgay, uh, Arlen Shoden, Chris Moen um, and company were all rallying to have this um, and have this come to fruition. So it was it was really hats off to those guys. Uh, they put in all the work to get us there. I'm probably missing some names. I'm not going to lie because there, there was a good, good, solid group there and uh, they, they put in the efforts um, and I, I can't thank them enough for that because I, I certainly had that one, one heck of a time. And uh, uh, like I said, it's one of, it was one of the one of the bright spots in uh, a lacrosse playing career or if anybody has attended that tournament, a lacrosse career of any kind. Um, I looked at guys like Jody Smeltzer, there's a, you know, once he got involved with that, he says, okay, this is it. We, we got to go. He's not getting any younger. And so were some of the other players. You know, they weren't getting any younger. And they said, if we're going to do it, this is the year to do it. And, um, you know, it uh, it turned out to be just a once-in-a-lifetime event for, for a lot of those players. No, you know what? I I got to say it was probably myself. Uh, Rob Calaval uh, was definitely another one. Uh, he was their goalie at the time. Um, so both of us, you know, we, we knew that our careers were coming close to an end. I mean, we were mid thirties at this point. Um, you know, so, you know, 
at, at this point we just wanted to have the experience to, to be honest with you so you know i knew if they wanted to do it it was going to be now or never kind of thing we had the opportunity so let's make make a go of it um so i took kind of the lead admin role on it and tried to organize everything and and uh, get jerseys and all that kind of stuff which is a nightmare don't order from china because it's uh, quite quite the process so um and you know we we fundraised and and did all that kind of stuff so there was lots of hands that helped um but the two key roles were rob and i um well obviously there were some perennial favorites uh the hometown uh Czech Republic team was was one of the favorites and then you had um, I think it was a team called the Mega Men out of the uh, US that had been um, kind of dominating that tournament for a while and every team had a sprinkling of ex-pros um, you know guys uh, like MacArthur who played for the Calgary Roughnecks was on a team and um, you know so there were some high caliber um players that you <laughs> to be honest you watch on tv and now you're playing against them and you, you just know why they, they made the pros well we were excited uh first and foremost uh right off the bat of the tournament uh we played the host team the Raditan team um right after opening ceremonies so to take you into that that experience um we're on the floor all the other teams are on the floor with us for ceremonies um there's a parachuter coming in, uh, landing on the field. Um, just the excitement over all, nearly 2,000 people in attendance there. Uh, just so nervous. There was lots of nerves, uh, if you will. And uh, right off ball drop, I, I recall a uh, quick face off win, and they put it in the back of our net within probably five seconds. And I remember just going, "Oh, here we go!" So it was a, it was a, it was an eye opener for the group. Uh, I believe the goal is called off on a crease call, uh, but maybe uh, maybe Jimmer can correct me on that one. But um, you know, we we settled down. I I, I recall we did lose that game, and uh, but uh, from there, you know, we we went through the tournament and we we battled hard and uh we didn't end up finishing in our in a round robin pool as, as well as we'd like um but we got into some playoff rounds won some games in the playoff rounds and uh sure had a heck of a time and enjoyed our enjoyed the experience to the fullest that's for sure um i thought overall we were we 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 were quite competitive like we just kind of um kind of got ourselves into a hole a little the early in the early first few games um unfortunately we were uh in a lot of penalty trouble we had kind of witnessed a game before ours and, and kind of how it was called was very kind of right up our alley a, a real rough kind of style so then when we got into our first couple games we thought we could play that way and um being such short games, you get shorthanded. It's those periods go by pretty quick, and it's it's hard to come back from. Well, the team was okay. Um, you know, again, we we lacked a little bit of scoring. Is, is the problem? Um, we didn't take our normal squad out there. We took because of uh, some guys had commitments, some guys couldn't afford it. You know, so like there was always that kind of aspect of it. So we picked up a few odd players here or there um, that were willing to go. Uh, but we we could have used a bit more scoring. Um, the team itself, would, I think we deserved a better fate than we had. Um, the it took us a, pretty much a full game to l learn their type of lacrosse. It was way different than what we were used to. Um, you know, like if somebody comes close to you in the crease or in the kill zone, I mean, and you kind of touch them, that's a penalty, like instant penalty and we were not used to that like somebody comes close you kind of you don't have to give them a hard cross check but you kind of let them know that you're there and uh yeah i mean we spent a lot of time in the box the first game and we ended up losing by a few um and then you know we played <laughs> we played the host team uh which you know pretty much ran us right over because they're they're actually the the team europe i believe i uh, guess the the um the international tournament was happening uh, shortly after. So 
you know, we kind of had an all-star squad that we were facing and yeah, they, they kind of dominated us. But after that, we won pretty much every game we played. Um, so, I mean, it was, you, I think if we were to take our normal team, we would have had a better showing. I think if we were to take a team from the PGLL as it currently stands, we'd have a good shot at winning. Um, you know, so overall, great experience. The team was okay, uh, you know, but here's the best part of that whole team. We were a team. Uh, and I mean, we had such a blast together. We, you know, we went sightseeing together. We did everything together as a team. There wasn't one person that was left off. Um, everybody had a travel buddy because, you know, as, as you know, traveling abroad and, and having a few uh, beverages, people get lost or misplaced. So, you know, like we made sure we took care of each other. So that was the, to me, that was the true tournament. And that was a true reflection of the PGLL overall, to be honest with you. I think it, it's all good. Just the, the experience, meeting players from other countries. Uh, and then just being able to talk across with um, players from all over the world and uh, really just uh, talk lacrosse. Like you're, you're there just to kind of see the game played from other, other um, countries, styles, and just kind of the experience of being in a new country was kind of, there's nothing but good memories from, from that trip. Yeah, there, there were, we were, I would have said we were kind of middle of the pack. You know, the the upper echelon were, were just that. They were they were in a league by themselves. Um, the the, the uh, other teams, you know, like Israel and um, some of those teams which were just being introduced to the sport, um, we didn't see in the... Uh, in the way the format was run as far as playoffs and uh, the round robin structure. Uh, Cause when you, you go in, you get tiered and you, you get pulled away, you win a game. And next thing you know, you're in the, the top eight as opposed to the bottom eight. Well, I think if I recall there, there's over nearly 20 teams or so, maybe more. Um, and I mean, there's varying skills in those amongst those teams. Uh, what was really neat about the tournament, I mean, you had teams from, from stateside, you had teams from Halifax, you had teams from uh, Easton Bowl, you had teams from, you know, all over the world pretty much. Um, there was varying skills amongst those teams and uh, I, there's guys like Gavin Prout, a uh, former NLL player playing in the tournament. So, I mean, that's always an eye opener when you're sharing a field with someone like that. Um, and yeah, so it was... It was a lot of skill on some teams, and then some teams, you know, you you could have you could have a little more laid back approach towards. But uh, uh, I can think of Raditon, uh Mainly, that roster was made up of Czech Republic uh, national team players, so you knew you were in for a dogfight there. Um, but yeah, just a really good tournament, lots of competition, like I said, and uh, you know, good times had by all. Oh, for sure. I mean, hands down, guys were asking. Um, you know, there's lots of guys that those, those teams are weird. Like what happens is a lot of them, like team Scotland, for example, is mostly guys from Canada that, you know, have a Scottish background of some sort. Um, so, I mean, they'll, they'll, uh, they're asking, there's lots of teams asking about next year. Like, are you guys coming back next year? And I said, well, I don't know, you know, like I, I'm getting kind of older and I don't know if I want to do this again. I uh, guess it was a it was a huge undertaking. It really was, and uh, I do a lot of things differently. Um, but you know the way we did it, it was it was a lot of work and a lot of preparation. Um, but you know what? We got noticed. There's lots of guys who went back the next year, like Down Larson's one of them. Um, you know they were asking questions about a lot of our players. So um, I definitely think we got noticed over there. Um, my only regret of going is um i like again i'd like to place a little higher um we placed kind of higher of the middle since just the format of the tournament we placed highest we could based uh, based on you know we ended up getting sent to the second tier um but realistically i mean if we'd have stuck in that if we'd had our normal team and a good representation of the pgll um 
you know, back then even, we would have done quite well. Um, nowadays, with the PGLL the way it is, I mean, there's several team, uh, several guys for, throughout the PGLL that actually go to that tournament. Um, Toporovsky's one of them. Um, there, there's a few guys that go to this tournament now. Uh, Fetchy, I believe, goes. One of the interesting things we, we found, or though I found, was kind of like we're used to kind of our style of go uh, go play uh, play lacrosse, um, and then go out with the with the boys and, and have a meal and have some have some drinks and and things like that. But there, it's really nothing's kind of uh, open really really late as far as you can get some. Um, you can get some drinks, but finding food or any like type of pub or things like that was like next to, next to impossible as far as. So we, I found that quite, quite interesting. That's, it's kind of different from our style of, of playing a night game and then going out to the pub and having some wings and beer. And there, it's kind of you can have some, you can have some drinks, but if you want any type of food, you're looking at like a little taco shop. Um, the whole thing was unbelievable. Like the, fis- the facility itself, a great outdoor um, arena, um, live TV. Um, I remember when we uh, we had our first practice there, and I knew I knew this was going to be special when uh, young players from uh, the Czech Republic would come out and watch us practice. You know, and they were just hanging on the fence and sitting in the stands uh, watching us. You know, here's here's a team from Canada that's, you know, the creators of the sport, uh, you know, where the sport was born. And and they were just watching with great enthusiasm. And then, of course, after the uh, the practice, they came out onto the, the field or the outdoor floor and were asking players for autographs and, and things like that. Um, it, little things like that is is quite an experience and you know to be honest caught some of the guys off guard I think um, because they the impact that they had on these young players from you know Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic I guess and some of the others that are around um, will save with some of those uh, younger players for the rest of their lives and, you know and uh, to sign out an autograph in your you're kind of looking around saying like, who's putting you up to this? And it, it's not that at all. It's just that they're so um, in love with the game and uh, to see players that they'd only dream about that play in North America is just something that um, was a, an experience that I'll never forget. I mean, even I had to sign an autograph. I, I was uh, you know, taken back by that. I was just a coach. and. You know, the, it's just a whole different love of the game there that uh, you don't see here. It was kind of creepy, you know, kids were coming up to you asking you for autographs. And so you're signing this book and it has like Jody Schmelzer, number six. And and then it'd have like a picture of your, your team beside it. And you'd have to sign beside the thing. And these kids were rushing over. And, you know, the one brave kid that knew some English would approach you and then you'd spend the next like 20 minutes signing these books awesome experience it was an awesome experience right certainly yes, like, <laughs> certainly the opening ceremonies uh right from right from the start you knew you weren't at just a host league tournament you weren't at some you know jamboree if you will um got right into it right uh, the the full the full crowd outdoor atmosphere which is totally different totally new to me um, uh, you had the parachuter come in, like I said, um, and all that excitement. You were, you were signing autographs for kids, which was absolutely surreal. Um, something that I, I won't forget. Uh, and then right to closing ceremonies. Uh, closing ceremonies, lights went off, big video board, uh, montage video of the whole tournament with highlights and everything uh, that led into a, a fireworks show that would rival uh, any in Saskatchewan. So it was something that uh, it, it, it really brought me brought me back to earth to think and like oh my goodness you know I I went to this because uh, I'd mentioned the the bucket list item of lacrosse players and that thing that tournament if you will that event uh, certainly 
uh, is number one in my eyes um, and something that has an overall uh, entertainment atmosphere and lacrosse atmosphere rolled into one. The experience was just kind of meeting meeting players from other countries and I would have definitely personally uh, I would have liked to done it like earlier in the in in the heat kind of my well my yeah I guess younger when I was younger <laughs> and I mean one short story <laughs> pun intended um, I mean we had uh, we had an incident with uh, ordering shorts from China we ordered everything in got it the day or two days before we left so we we uh, were leaving on the Saturday get it on the Thursday and we try these shorts on um, I'm a pretty pretty big dude um, and my wife who's like 130 pounds fits my shorts perfectly so we're like what do we do now so uh, a buddy of mine in the industry phone him up and I say like you have to bail us out we need to have shorts so he literally drives to Calgary, picks up these shorts, drives back, does them all up, gets them all out to us, and we, we take off. But everybody brings their game shorts with them. And uh, so the first day that you're there, you're allowed a couple of warm-up sessions. And the warm-up session is actually taped. Uh, it's shown on TV. There's people watching you. There's tons of fans in the stands. There's other teams watching you. So like you're on display. So we're getting ready and the guys are kind of a little bit nervous, right? Like, this is kind of weird playing in front of, you know, hundreds and thousands of fans, right? Like, it's, it's different for us. And then I forget who it was. Um, they're like, you know what, guys, put on the short shorts. And we're like, yep, let's do it. So everyone threw on these shorts. Well, like I could barely run in mine. Mine were constantly giving me a wedgie. So we, we run out onto the field and these everybody just has the the stop and stare and the gasp like, ah, what are they wearing? <laughs> and everybody, these things are like about five inches, six inches above our knees. And uh, we're running around doing our warm up and, and uh, practice and stuff. And we get off and everyone is just killing themselves in the stands. And there's a lot of trading that goes on like jerseys and t-shirts and stuff that was the hottest commodity by far was uh regina heat's short shorts uh so i mean that kind of stuff uh it's the memories that you build with with the team uh throughout you know all your games in the pgll um and you know memories like that i'll, I'll have till the day i die right so to me that's worth every penny and every moment that i spend playing lacrosse I've, I've said along that anybody that's ever played the game has to go at just once. I mean, the stands are full. Um, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, some of the people I've met over the my time there, um, I'm still in contact with today, and they're they're living all over the states. Uh, they're living in uh, Denmark and Norway and all over the place. So it's uh, it's some lasting friendships. It's such a great community. Oh yeah, no, I could. Uh, it, it was surreal. Like I, I would definitely, I would, um, I would encourage any anyone or any team from this province to attend that tournament if you can. I know there's free agent teams you can go with. Um, it is absolutely the coolest experience you can have. Yeah, like, I mean the PGLL itself, uh, very competitive. And if if we ever wanted to send a team in there, and I'm going to make a plug here. Like, I know a guy, we can get in. <laughs> I'd gladly be a towel boy or a water boy or whatever you want just to go, because an amazing tournament in front of, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of fans um, with all the hype and, and everything all around it. Like there's TV cameras always in your face and there's always things going on. That's my PG version. <laughs> <laughs>